Self-supply is an important topic, and I'm really pleased to have this opportunity to give a hydrogeological perspective. Groundwater is 99% of all liquid freshwater, and it follows from that then that groundwater is central to the fight against poverty, to food and water security, as reported on by UNESCO uh, last year. Irrigation is draining aquifers to grow mostly wrong types of food for the mostly affluent. 40% of all groundwater is extracted from the 68 largest aquifers of the world, but one third of these are depleted beyond recovery in human time. So there's a water crisis. Groundwater is over extracted and mismanaged for globalized agriculture. Less pumping of many aquifers is needed. But in the global water crisis, there's a second part, and it's a paradox. Where there's water poverty, groundwater is under-extracted, many more wells are needed for more than a billion rural people in water poverty. Hundreds of millions of people live in hills and mountains engaged in agriculture. Many rely on springs with fecal contamination. Even at improved spring sources, E. coli concentrations are commonly high. At surface improvements generally do not reduce pathogens because they travel on the shallow subsurface into the spring water. 250 million rural people in India drink spring water. Much of it is likely contaminated. Wells need to be drilled beside the springs to draw deeper uncontaminated water as the water supply. Much of global water poverty is in Africa. Water washes poverty away. When we include those who drink unsafe water from wells and springs, more than one-third of humanity lives in water poverty, the largest and most shameful failure of our civilization. Pipe water is not the solution for most. Solutions at the household are the only feasible path for most. The households in need are mostly spread out, many in rough terrain. Small well drilling methods are essential to access where the wells are needed. Groundwater is everywhere beneath us. It's in the fractures in the rock and in the pore spaces between the sand and, and gravel particles. And the water table in general is less than about 25 to 30 meters in most areas so fresh groundwater is generally accessible. This is an example. Fresh groundwater is nearly everywhere. This is an ancient hand-dug well in the Gobi Desert that I noticed on a field trip uh, many years ago. We got out of the vehicle, found a hand-dug well, and looked down, and the water table was at two meters, and the water was fresh, good water quality. These were wells were dug by nomads when camels were used for, con for transportation. Much water poverty existed in America more than a hundred years ago, as evidenced by hand pumps and people taking water out of uh, dug wells by pails. Water poverty was eradicated from America by self-supply initiated locally with lowest cost methods. This proved that enough fresh water for household wells exists nearly everywhere. Dug wells and manual wells drilled in America between the 1600s and the, uh, right up through the 1940s. A dug well on the left in difficult conditions, but even if the aquifer is not very good, the well acts as a reservoir. And on the right, manual drilling. The proof of this is, are the records for 45 million hand pumps made in the United States between the 1600s and 1970. Manual well drilling is a self-supply su step for household wells. Example on the left, Wisconsin in 1895, and on the right, a method uh, invented in Bolivia by a German engineer in 2011. Africa. 
Studies indicate that there is enough fresh groundwater not too deep to supply household wells just about anywhere. And the orange area on this map, which is very small, is the only area where the well yields expected based on this mapping would not be sufficient. And in Africa, much of the fresh, fresh groundwater occurs in hard basement rock that requires rock drilling machines. Manual drilling can't go deep enough uh, because of the hardness of the rock. And on the right, we see a, a view of the, of the geology where there are large chunks of rock that aren't weathered to become soft, and therefore to make a well, you have to get through those. Only 500 to 1,000 liters per day of safe water is needed to lift each family out of water poverty. Wells to supply this daily yield should be feasible just about anywhere if the appropriate well drilling methods and hydrogeological knowledge is used. Two examples of uh, manual drilling, the EMAS method that I mentioned earlier, which is particularly versatile, but there's several other methods that are very useful. And then on the uh, lower right, there's a high-tech method, manual but made out of high-tech materials, this, the village drill invented in Utah in 2013. So one needs to be able to drill through the hard materials to get down to where the water is However, manual drilling has limited po possibilities to, to penetrate deep enough in the rock to access fresh water in the fractures. Therefore, machine drills are needed. On the left, there's an example of a small cable tool drill, the Rhino drill, developed by a rotary project in California uh, and now constructed uh, in a commercial uh, manufacturing shop. It's rugged, easy to use, effective, uh, but won't go through the hardest rock. And on the right, a mud rotary drilling machine made in Texas uh, that is portable. Portable rock drills made for finding minerals offer greatest potential for water well drilling in hard rock. These machines take rock core, and that's why they're used all over the world uh, for uh, mineral exploration. And here we see some slides of field demonstrations using uh, uh, one of these drills. The smallest one uh, is the Shaw drill, uh, and the other one uh, is the Winky drill, uh, both of which are being improved. Uh, innovation is essential to move forward on these things. However, if you're drilling a small diameter hole, which is what these drills make, uh, you need to have a method to create the seal that's uh, innovative. Here we have on the left the winky drill making a hole and in the middle we have a, a tube uh, down into which uh, a, a slurry of uh, bentonite grout is being pumped uh, into a, um, a, um, a container, a flexible container uh, and at the end, then, we end up with the borehole sealed with the uh, grout inside the, what we call, uh, a shroud. We're working on an alternative that would use the lowest cost uh, water tubing, that black coiled pipe there, and then you would slip these uh, bentonite uh, swelling seal sleeves over it, as many as you would want, and then you would lower it down into the drill hole and let the water inflate the seal, uh, and then you're done. This is an experimental being uh, field tested. I recently became aware of a, an extremely innovative methodology. You can check it out on the website. An entirely new type of well drilling. The materials itself cost less than $500 for a drilling unit. It's an airlift reverse flow drilling method, uh, roughly $400 per well, and the training needed to make it operate is relatively easy. Four methods need to be used synergistically at the family farm scale. Small household wells, point of use water filters, rainwater harvesting, and deep bed farming all of which allow great possibilities for the rural 
of people in water poverty to greatly improve their lives. Tens of millions of household wells are needed to access groundwater that exists nearly everywhere. What are the obstacles? Knowledge and money for supported self-supply and better understanding what are the best methods to drill wells in many circumstances. We need comparative field trials. Wells installed by manual drilling or small engine machines equipped with hand pumps cannot drain aquifers. That's not a threat to, to uh, over-exploitation of aquifers in the world. Thank you for your attention. Um, I'll be pleased to answer questions uh, in the question period.